everyone, my name is Chloe Miller and I'm a sophomore at Utah State University this year. I created a historical pamphlet about voting rights in Cache County, Utah, that specifically focuses on notable suffragists as well as notable locations within the valley. Um, in this presentation, I'll talk about the process of creating the pamphlet and also show off the final product. So I had a few different reasons for wanting to do this project. First of all, I was awarded a scholarship to conduct this research, but it's also a wonderful opportunity to learn more about a really interesting topic and educate more people about local history. The research that I did now also has the potential to drive deeper research into women's suffrage in Cache County. I hope that other researchers can build on the information that I've collected here and create a larger quantity of research dedicated to suffrage in this area. I started this project by conducting background research on the history of suffrage in Utah in order to contextualize the movement that was happening in, in Cache County. Once I had a good foundation of that history, I specified my research to the Cache Valley area using digital newspaper archives such as Utah Digital Newspapers. This site allowed me to search keywords, filter by date and newspaper, and find notable events that were published in multiple places. I also used Utah State's Special Collections and Archives to find photographs, specific locations of notable sites such as houses or halls whose addresses weren't recorded, and further information about certain suffragists. So like I said, I began by just doing general research on the topic. From there, I narrowed the focus of the research to just look at Cache County's history and notable women. As I collected information specific to Cache County, I compiled all that material into a Word document, amassing as much information as I could. I then organized most of the material into a comprehensive research paper that was about nine pages long. Then I cut the paper down to just the essential information. It was at this stage that I decided what the pamphlet would include. It was difficult choosing what to focus on, but there's a brief summary of Utah's history of suffrage, a timeline of the Cache County movement connecting to the broader national movement, four notable suffragists from the area, and five significant locations in the valley. I sent all this material to Special Collections graphic designer and talked about how it should look. She came up with a first draft and sent it back for feedback. We continued revising and making changes to both content and style for a couple of weeks. In late December and early January, the revisions began slowing down as we got closer to a final product. It was sent to USC's public relations team for approval before the end of the year, and then it went to print just after the first of the new year. We received the physical pamphlets in February. I really learned a lot from this project. I'm thankful I didn't have to do it all on my own, and that I received support and help from my boss and other people in special collections. Having multiple people review your work on a long-term project is extremely helpful and very necessary. Additionally, I assumed when I started this project that it would be more difficult to find information about the women's suffrage movement in Cache Valley than in Salt Lake, just due to its relative size and importance, but it was even harder than I expected at first. There wasn't really one good, comprehensive source of information that I found on the topic, so it required a lot of hard work just to find good material. It also just gave me a deeper understanding of a really important historical movement through the lens of a small town setting. I learned about how the Western movement connected to the Eastern movement, which was headed by the famous figures of Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. In the picture on this slide, it shows Susan B. Anthony seated in the middle, surrounded by local leaders of the suffrage movement in Utah, which almost seems like a collision of worlds because Western suffrage history isn't really a focus of the American suffrage movement when it's taught. This is one side of the pamphlet. Its main colors are yellow and purple because those are the historic colors of the women's suffrage movement. It includes a timeline of notable events that are either specific to Cache Valley or Utah or are part of the broader suffrage movement, as it also mentions other racial groups having their right to vote acknowledged by law. It also has a map of the five notable locations that I found in Cache Valley. The picture under the timeline is of the Logan Tabernacle around 1885, which is what it would have looked like to those fighting for women's suffrage at the time. This is the other side of the pamphlet. It has more detail that is specific to Cache Valley, providing a quick summary of Utah's suffrage movement. Utah originally granted women living there the right to vote in 1870, but that was revoked in 1887 by the federal government as an attempt to prevent the practice of polygamy, which was still common at the time. Utah women rallied for their rights to be acknowledged again, and a clause guaranteeing women's suffrage was eventually written into the state constitution before Utah was granted statehood in 1896. This side also includes more details on the significant locations which include the home of a notable Cache Valley woman, the Cache County Courthouse, the Logan Tabernacle where several suffrage meetings were held, and locations where legal proceedings took place. 
At the foreground of the pamphlet are these four women, Maddie Hansen, Mary Ann Weston Mon, Louisa Green Richards, and Adeline Hatch Barber. Maddie Hansen was a well-known Logan woman who was highly influential in local politics. She was elected the second vice president of the Cache County Women's Suffrage Association in 1889, as well as the first vice president to the convention of the Cache County Democratic Party in 1895. She gave multiple political speeches, including a speech at a July 8, 1895 Democratic meeting in Hiram on women in politics. Mary Ann Weston Mon was an advocate for women's causes as the first president of the Cache Valley branch of the Relief Society, a women's organization of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that has ties to the suffrage movement. Her husband, Peter, was the chairman of the Committee on Elections for the Territorial Legislature, and he introduced the bill that first recognized Utah women's right to vote in 1870. Louisa Green Richards, also known as Lula, was Utah's first female newspaper editor and settled in Smithfield, Utah in 1865. After founding the Smithfield Sunday School Gazette in 1869, she moved to Salt Lake City to become the first editor of the Woman's Exponent in 1872. The Exponent was a highly influential newspaper for Utah women, touching on a multitude of issues including suffrage, religion, and women's education. Richards later penned the song, Woman Arise, for the Utah Woman's Suffrage Songbook, published by the Utah Women's Suffrage Association in 1891. Adeline Hatch Barber, a Relief Society president in Smithfield, spoke at the founding meeting of the Cache County Women's Suffrage Association in 1889. A silk maker, she wove the black silk gifted to national suffrage leader Susan B. Anthony by a group of Relief Society women in appreciation for her help in securing the right to vote for Utah women. The dress that Anthony had made from the material is on display at her home in Rochester, New York. The walking tour component of this pamphlet highlights some of Logan's notable locations related to suffrage. You'll notice that they're all within just blocks of each other. Everything happened in somewhat close quarters during this movement. The first location is the Cache County Courthouse, where legal proceedings and democratic conventions took place. A common topic was often suffrage. The Palace Hall, which is unfortunately no longer standing due to damage from an earthquake, was the location of a celebratory ball after Utah women's voting rights were recognized in the state constitution. The third location, the Thatcher Opera House, is also no longer here, as it burned in 1912 and was replaced by another building. The Opera House was sometimes adjourned to by local representatives when the courthouse became too warm or crowded. The fourth location is the Logan Tabernacle. It was here that the Cache Valley branch of the Utah Women's Suffrage Association was formed in 1889, and many subsequent suffrage-related meetings were held there as well. A celebratory banquet was also given in the Tabernacle basement, after Utah women's voting rights were again recognized in 1896. The final location is the home of Peter and Mary Ann Weston Mon, who were prominently for female recognition in the social sphere early on. Their original home has also been demolished and replaced with the current home at this address. I just want to end by saying thank you. I appreciate having the chance to share what I've learned from this incredibly rewarding project. It has been a wonderful nine months learning more and improving my research skills. Thank you.